Hi, Blood Talk fans. Welcome back or welcome if this is the first time you have come across my video. Today, we will go over pre-warm technique. This is a common technique used in blood bank. It is a really easy technique to master. And once you master it, this technique will help you tremendously in ABO discrepancy, antibody identifications, and cross matches. Without further ado, let's get into it. What is a pre-warm technique? As the name imply, you will be warming up something before performing the test. We are doing this technique to see if we can eliminate the reactions at a higher temperature. Keep in mind that our bodies are 37 degrees Celsius, so any reactions that show up at 37 degrees is considered a clinically significant reaction and need to be investigated. After you place a specimen at 37 degree heating blocks for about 15 to 30 minutes, it's depending on your hospital policies, we then perform the test. If the test needs saline for washing, you will have to incubate the saline as well. That is it. This is the short version of pre-warm technique. I'm sure you want to know more, so please keep on watching. There are a few reasons that pre-warm technique would be helpful. First, the co-antibody may interfere with identifications of the wake-up antibody. The pre-warm technique limits the ability of co-clinically insignificant autoantibodies, such as anti-I, anti-IH, or anti-H. So using pre-warm technique may help you unmask clinically significant autoantibodies. Second, wake-up antibody identifications when co-antibody is clinically significant. Usually, co-antibodies are insignificant, but it would be considered as significant antibody once it reacts at 37 degrees. A strong co-reacting antibody may carry over through all three phases, including the AHG phase or anti-human goblin phase. Third, solving ABO discrepancy. This is when you have unexpected reactivity in the reverse typing. I have a video about ABO discrepancy for both forward and reverse, so if you missed that or need to review, please go check it out at the end of this video. Fourth, ASG cross match. When a call antibody has been identified, so when the call antibody interferes with the immediate spin cross match, an ASG cross match can be used to help to find a compatible unit. An unexpected reaction in an immediate spin cross match could be due to cold antibody. So you can repeat the cross match using P-warm technique. You will warm up the patient's serums and donor cells separately prior to testing. What do you need to prepare before performing the P-warm technique? 37 degree heat blocks, a water bath. Test tubes, pipettes, centrifuge, your PPE like gloves, lab coat, goggles, patient samples, test cells, anti IgG, warm saline, IgG coated cell or check cell. Procedures Step 1 Begin warming a bottle of 0.9% saline in the warm water bath. To be used later for watching the cells. If you don't have a water bath, you can also heat it up in a heating block. Step 2. Place one tube of appropriate test cells into proper label tubes. If the PEG panel is pre-warmed, PEG can be added to the cells at this step. However, this may increase the detections of co-reacting antibody. PEG is one of the potentiators that is commonly used in blood bank to enhance the reaction. Third, allocate the samples of patient plasma into a proper label tube. Fourth, place the tubes of test cells and patient plasma and incubate for about 15 minutes. I've seen procedures for as short as 10 minutes to as long as 30 minutes before in some hospitals, so check your hospital policy. Fifth, Add two or three drops of warm plasma to each test cell without removing the test tube from the heating block. This way, you minimize the temperature fluctuation. Step 6. 
Mix the test tube by spinning them in the heating block. Step 7. Incubate for 30 minutes. Step 8. Fill tube with 37 degrees Celsius that has been previously warmed in the water bath while tube still in the heating block. Check the temperature of the saline prior using. Make sure it's not too hot or not too cold. The use of saline that warmer than 37 degrees may elude the clinically significant antibody. Step 9. Send the fuels for 60 seconds and decant to a dye button immediately. Do not let the RBC sit in the warm saline, as they may potentially elude clinically significant antibody. The same reason why you have to check, make sure that the saline was not too hot when you use it in the previous step. Step 10. Wash the cells three more times. Make sure you use the saline at 37 degrees Celsius. Step 11. After the last wash, add two drops of IgG ASG room temp. Make sure your reagent is room temp and not just come out of the refrigerator. Step 12. Centrifuge for about 15 to 20 seconds, then read and record the results. Step 13. Add IgG coded check cells to all negative tests. We usually just call it a check cells. It is very important to do this step. This is a QC step. If the test is negative after adding the check cells, you will have to repeat the test because the test become invalid. What does the results mean? First, if the results is negative after pre-warm, it's most likely you had a cold antibody. Second, if the reaction is persists after the pre-warm, you may have a strong cold antibody or clinically significant cold antibody. Limitation Pre-warm technique has some limitations that we should be aware of. First, certain low affinity or low titer clinically significant allo antibody may be lost during warm washings. That's why you have to make sure you don't use the saline that was too hot. Second, the pre-warm technique intentionally skipped the reading at 37 degrees. Therefore, we may miss certain antibody of the IgM class that are normally able to detect at this step. Blood, 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 hot, hot, fun time. Do you know what are the reasons that the check cell would not work? Let's go over it. One. Forgot to add IgG after the last watch. 2. Waited too long before adding the IgG after the last watch. 3. Not enough IgG was added. Maybe you added one drop instead of two. Or 4. Not enough washing. That's all I have for today. Did I miss anything? If you have any question, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. If I don't know the answer, I will try my best to find out the answer for you. Also, keep in mind that the information I put together here is general practice at the moment. As time change, certain practice may change and different institutions may have a different policies. So please keep an eye out for that. If you like my video and think it's helpful to you in any way, please share it with your friends and I shall see you all again next time. As always, remember, your blood tell you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.